Have you ever wondered what happens when artificial intelligence takes on a classic fighting game? Imagine a world where something with the creativity of a human has time to think about each button press, like a chess game. Today, we're diving into an experiment where AI challenges the legendary Mortal Kombat in a battle of pure skill. But this is no ordinary AI. This is an entity trained to fight, think, and conquer like never before through the power of deep reinforcement learning. How did it start? How did it learn? And can it actually beat the game? Today, we'll be going on the journey of an AI from code to combatant. Witness the transformation of a simple button-mashing buffoon to a fighting god, displaying the true power of machine learning. Can this technology surpass human skill in one of the most challenging fighting games ever created? You're about to find out. So what makes a game like Mortal Kombat a perfect candidate for an AI challenge? It's not just the complexity or nostalgia of the game, it's the intricate choice of strategies and decisions. Oh, and it also helps having the reaction times of a 16-year-old on Adderall. But in this journey, our AI is going to be starting from scratch, a blank slate with the potential to become an absolute monster. To kick this AI off, we needed to design some rewards for the AI, and I decided to go with pure simplicity, where damaging the opponent equals good and getting hit equals bad. This approach provides the AI of complete autonomy over the detailed mechanics of the game, allowing it to craft its own unique strategy from the ground up based on the most fundamental principles of the game, no human knowledge involved. In order to learn to play the game, the AI is provided only with the screen without any prior knowledge of what it means or how to use it, being more clueless than your grandma trying to use an iPhone. To understand movement and action, the AI is actually given access to the previous four frames, allowing it to perceive motion, an essential aspect since a single frame does not convey movement. This method forces the AI to independently interpret visual data, fostering its growth through trial and error, a cornerstone of deep reinforcement learning. For the controls the AI is going to use to actually play the game, I provided the AI with 14 actions, which are just basic controls available in Mortal Kombat. These actions include moves like jumping, crouching, punching, blocking, and hitting the light button, and were selected without any human input, apart from maybe one. They simply reflect the fundamental mechanics of the game. This ensures that any emerging strategies are the AI's own, developed without predetermined human tactics influencing its decision-making process. After that was done, I then had to go ahead and test all of this code meticulously, to make sure it performed as expected within the game's environment. You see, in regular programming, if there's an error, the compiler usually just lets you know. When programming AI though, if you mess up, the AI will just do exactly what you told it. What's that? You wanted ice cream but you forgot to say how much? But when your AI runs out of milk and the ice cream starts to taste like human babies, that's when you'll know you messed up. To add to the terrifyingness of AI, no parameters in the AI are actually manually tuned for performance. Instead, the AI adjusts its parameters based on its own learning experience. This autonomous adjustment process underscores the essence of deep reinforcement learning, where the AI evolves based on its interactions with the game, shaping its tactics and strategies from scratch. Hopefully, with all of this in place, the AI will be able to learn, master, and maybe even enjoy the complex human creation of Mortal Kombat. In our pursuit of maximizing efficiency and performance, the AI operates under conditions far beyond typical gameplay scenarios. It's playing the game at approximately 250% of the normal speed, massively accelerating its learning process. Additionally, the AI isn't just focusing on a single instance of the game, it's simultaneously playing four games at once. This parallel processing significantly increases the amount of data that AI can learn from at any given moment enhancing its ability to recognize patterns and learn strategies at an extraordinary pace. If you're interested in how exactly I set all of this up and want to know more about how the AI works, be sure to check out one of my other videos, The Evolution of My Mario Kart AI, as that very closely resembles this system and talks a lot more about the more fine-grained details. The foundation of our AI is built upon the popular Rainbow DQN algorithm, a landmark in the field of deep reinforcement learning. However, I didn't just stop there, but integrated numerous enhancements and optimizations to surpass the original framework's capabilities. 
At the core of the AI's decision-making process is a residual convolutional neural network, a sophisticated architecture that processes the visual input from the game and uses it to produce actions. This network is not just any ordinary neural network though, it's equipped with almost 10 million parameters. This sounds like a lot, however when you realize that ChatGPT4 uses almost 2 trillion, it's not quite that many. Nonetheless, it enables it to capture and analyze the intricate details of the game environment and execute strategies with precision, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in game AI development. The ultimate goal of this? To create an AI that doesn't just play the game, but is capable of reaching superhuman performance, showcasing the remarkable capabilities of modern artificial intelligence. Anyway, with our AI now fully set up and ready to go, it's time to let our AI do what it does best and spend more time gaming than a 12-year-old pro Fortnite gamer with a year's supply of Mountain Dew. The journey begins with our AI devoid of any strategy. Its initial tactic is pure randomness, a chaotic barrage of moves with no discernible pattern, button mashing harder than you the first time you played a fighting game, let's be honest. Surprisingly, this approach yields some success. Amidst the flurry of actions, enough strikes actually connect to carry the AI through the initial rounds. This phase is less about what the AI can do, and more about discovering the basic mechanics of the game through relentless trial and error. Here, the AI is just exploring what different actions do, and what the things on the screen actually mean. As the AI sifts through the data from its haphazard beginnings, it begins to pick up on which moves are effective. It quickly latches onto the sword, Scorpion's weapon that offers reach and damage. The AI simplifies its approach, focusing on just extracting the sword and slashing at its opponents relentlessly. This method, although primitive, proves effective against the game's lackluster early enemies, allowing our learner to advance to the impressive eighth enemy. This strategy is basic, but marks the AI's first step from random chaos to an actual strategy. Four hours in, and progress is slow but incremental. The AI starts to refine its sword-centric approach, now interspersing its slashes with a few kicks here and there. These adjustments are subtle and the progress is slight, but is able to nudge the AI to reaching the ninth enemy. It's clear that while the AI has grasped the basics, mastering the nuances of Mortal Kombat requires a lot more than just hopelessly attacking. The learning curve is steep, and the AI still has longer to go than an 18-year-old trying to get a mortgage. After 8 hours, a significant development occurs as the AI begins to integrate defensive manoeuvres into its repertoire. Dodging starts to become a part of its strategy, allowing it to avoid incoming attacks and obviously sustain less damage. This new fell skill propels the AI further, onto the 11th enemy, showcasing its growing understanding of the game. However, the real challenge begins here, as the AI encounters opponents with increasingly complex strategies a stark contrast to the earlier enemies which were a bit timid when it came to attacking, something which isn't really ideal in a fighting game. By now, the AI has become a much stronger player, breezing through the early enemies with a blend of aggression and evasion. Yet, it hits a significant roadblock at the 12th enemy, Shinnok, whose diverse moveset and aggressive tactics test the AI's limits. The battle with Shinnok is particularly gruelling, because by this point the AI's health bar is very depleted. In endurance mode, you get a heal after every third enemy, but since Shinnok is the 12th enemy, this means the AI's health bar was more depleted than Blockbuster's bank account after the invention of Netflix. Despite numerous attempts, Shinnok remains a formidable barrier, highlighting the AI's need for further growth and adaptation. The struggle against Shinnok becomes a pivotal moment in the AI's training. Hour after hour, it faces defeat, but with each match, it learns, adapts, and incrementally improves. Then, in an unexpected turn, the AI reaches Shinnok with the health bar of a 90-year-old, and in a display of tactical precision, defeats him without taking a single hit. This victory is a testament to the AI's capacity for learning and adaptation, stomping an enemy it once feared. However, the celebration is brief, as Sector, the subsequent enemy, proceeds to absolutely curb stomp the AI with no hesitation. At 30 hours, the transformation is starting to look pretty damn good. The AI now blitzes through the initial enemies with ease, showcasing ruthless attacks and a disciplined defense. It has even started executing more complex combos, maximizing its damage in a short period of time. 
This strategic depth allows the AI to finally reach the final boss, Blaze, a towering monster whose size is second only to your mother. Initially, Blaze overwhelms the AI, demonstrating the gap that still exists between competence and mastery. Yet the AI's journey from random actions to strategic gameplay indicates that this gap is closing, and it won't be long before the AI is finally able to master Mortal Kombat. First up, the AI is against the red-headed goth girl and absolutely gives her the business without taking a single hit. Next up, we've got Sonya, who gets comboed so hard, I don't even think she threw a single punch. Third, we've got the bald spiky dude, who despite trying to play dead, gets no remorse from Mr. AI, who doesn't care for your silly human emotions. Next up, we've got Kai, and despite his defensive stance, gets launched through a wall and battered into the ground. Number five, and I don't even really know what to say with this one, the AI just beat the crap out of him. Now we reach this high school jock looking guy, who is the first one to actually land some hits. No idea why the AI seemed to do the worst against this guy of all people, but despite getting some good hits off, it doesn't even get close to a win. Next up we have the slightly inappropriately dressed vampire girl, and despite trying to seduce the AI to stand a chance, doesn't realise that this AI ain't no simp and gives her the business anyway. Next we have Jax, who has metal arms and a gun on his back, but doesn't dare lay a finger on Scorpion because he knows who the real cyborg here is. Next up we've got this, well, I don't know what he is, but I'm pretty sure this is the meaning of a face only a mother could love, but I still think he's getting put up for adoption to say the least. Now we're on to the 10th opponent, and it looks like the AI has finally met one of his own kind, but after a brief disagreement about whether Mac or Windows is the superior operating system, things turn a bit south. Jokes aside, the AI is now onto the 11th opponent, and this is where they start being actually quite skillful. But the AI's ability to do these frame-perfect dodges is really insane, and doesn't even take a hit on lots of them. The AI then returns to its old nemesis, Shinnok. It's really crazy to see that after being stuck on this level for a really long time, it eventually learns to absolutely master the matchup, and again does it flawlessly. While watching this AI, I find it crazy to look at the top left, where we can see how the AI rates each of the actions it has. The way they flicker around is absolutely insane, showing just how precise the AI is able to be with its actions. Also, on screen now you can see the progress the AI made while playing. I think the scariest part of this is that even after this point, the AI was still clearly improving, so it's crazy to think just what AI is capable of. Anyway, we've reached the end game now, and we're up against the final boss blaze once again, with our AI looking to prove its complete mastery over Mortal Kombat. The AI does take a hit here and there, but ultimately it's no contest as the AI proceeds to destroy Blaze without a hint of remorse. I've got an AI to play loads of different games now from racing games to Super Mario Galaxy, so be sure to check out my channel if you haven't seen those ones before. Thanks for watching as always, and I hope to see you again in the next one.